Hi, I'm Chris Kennedy, General Manager and Auctioneer here at Harcourts Gold, one of two auctioneers working across the business. And I'm Mark Morrison, one of the other auctioneers here for the Harcourts Gold team. So Mark, why would I take my property to auction if I was contemplating selling? The reason we always recommend going to auction for our vendors is that we get all of the auction agreement organised, get everything in line, get everything sorted before we kick off the campaign and then we can actually go live get all of the buyers gathered, get them all interested, and try and get them into the room and get them competing for your home. And we find out if we can achieve a premium price for you as the owner. So Mark, how would you achieve a premium price in the auction room? We get them in a competitive bidding situation where they're seeing other bidders in the room, they're able to change their mind as many times as they like in terms of the value, and they often come into the room with fighting fun. They'll get emotionally connected to the house and they can't stand to lose it, so they'll bid more. So in saying that, do I have to be in a, what they call a cash and unconditional position? And what does that actually mean? Absolutely. So our auction process, it is cash and it's unconditional. So the, the process is a little bit different in that all of the due diligence is actually done before the auction date. So you get your lawyer to review the contracts, you get a building inspection, you talk to your bank. All of those processes are actually done before the auction day so that any bids you put forward, it is unconditional. So no conditions at all being subject to finance or builder. That's all carried out before then. That's right. Okay, so in saying that, if I wanted to get my father or my solicitor bid on my behalf, can that happen and how would I go about doing that? That's right. So if you're not comfortable to actually bid yourself, you can certainly get a third party or a different member uh, of your family or perhaps a trusted solicitor, something like that, or in fact the agent you're working with to go through that bidding process for you. That's not a problem. We can just undertake some paperwork um, and get the authority for that to happen. And bidding means putting my hand in the air or, you, or calling a number? That's correct, that's right. Do you as the auctioneer control that or do the bidders in the room control that? Well the auctioneer can place bids on behalf of the owner, now that's known as a vendor bid. So if we do place vendor bids then we make that really clearly known to all the bidders in the room that that's happening. Now that typically happens at a lower level in the auction process and it's really just giving a guideline to the buyers in the room that we're not at a level where we're selling and if they've got interest over and above that level that they would be encouraged to bid. So how do you determine where to start your bidding if you are taking a property to auction? You'll get a feel for the marketplace out there as a buyer in terms of perhaps other recent sales in the area, those sorts of things. The agent will often help out and is more than happy to provide statistics along those lines as well. So you should be able to get a bit of a feel, but ultimately you can just bid at a level that you're comfortable to start with, and then you'll see the other interested parties bidding as well, and then you can just make your mind up accordingly. Should I come to an auction room with a predetermined level of what I'm going to bid to? I often hear sales consultants and auctioneers talk about a fighting fund. What does that mean? Yeah, that's right. So there's, there's normally three numbers, Chris, that you'd actually come along to the auction room with. The, the first number will be the lowest, and that's probably the number that you'd like to try and get it for. That, that might be a bit of a steal, or you'd be pretty happy and comfortable if you bought it for X. The next number up the, up the ladder, as it were, is, is the, the fair market value. So the number that you think that you might have to pay for it, based on your research, based yeah. on the feedback that you've got from the listing agent. Uh, and then the third number is probably that fighting fund that you refer to. So you do need to come there with a little bit of uh, loose change in the pockets, as I say, a little bit of a fighting fund. So if you do get into a bidding war with other parties or party in the room, then you do have the ability to stretch yourself. That brings me to, to the next question. If we don't reach a level where the people that are selling the home are happy to sell it, I think you call that the reserve. Yes. Uh, what is What happens then? How do we determine the way forward from that point? So there's a few different scenarios that can happen in that situation, Chris. Typically speaking in the gold auction rooms, we'll try and keep things really transparent and we'll continue to actually work on the auction floor with you as the highest bidder. We'll basically be very clear saying, look, you know, you do need to bid a little bit more for the opportunity to try and buy. We're not at the reserve. That will always be disclosed and announced when we are, you know, past that reserve price. If 
things do stall and it seems like we're running out of momentum in the room, then we do have the ability to pause the auction and we'll basically take you as the highest bidder into a meeting room so you've got some privacy and have a discussion with you, pass on the expectations of the owner in terms of you know where the money needs to be on the day and, and we'll basically have a negotiation back and forth until we can reach a, a level where both parties are happy to move forward. Right, so we, we often hear uh, the terminology terms and conditions of auction. Can you explain that? Absolutely. So that's your auction agreement. So your listing agent's going to provide you with all of the details of the auction agreement. Um, so you can run through that with your solicitor or a trusted party that, you, that you're working with just to ensure that, all, that you're very happy and comfortable, you're completing your due diligence and that's going through uh, any, any pertinent details in the agreement. You know, you're reviewing the limit title, there's going to be outlines there around settlement date, um, you know, possession date, those sorts of things as well. So it's just all the, all the information up front. If I wanted, as a buyer, a different settlement date or was only able to pay, say, 5% deposit due to KiwiSaver, am I able to do that as a buyer? Absolutely, Chris, and I think that's a, a really good point you, you raise in that there are barriers for, for some people, I think, traditionally when it comes to auction, which we can actually overcome to actually help them get to auction to be in a position to be able to bid. So if you need a longer settlement date, then we can get an, what's called an aside agreement um, organised for you where you would put to the owners a, a proposed date or a preferred date that you would rather take possession of the house. That might be a, a couple of months longer or even just a few extra weeks longer. But if that gives you the ability to in turn sell your own home, give you a little bit of time to perhaps save some more money to get together before settlement date, and that's one option. You referred to the lower deposit as well, so standard in the auction agreement is a 10% deposit. However, in some cases we do allow, with our, with our vendor's uh, permission, the ability to accept a 5% deposit as well. If I am the highest bidder on the day and the auctioneer uh, sells it to me, what are my obligations from that point forward? So at the fall of the hammer, if the auctioneer knocks the property down in your favour, you are the buyer, so you've got to understand it is, it's cash, it's unconditional, so you're committed very much so. So there's the expectation that you're paying 10% uh, deposit on the day, so that's generally made by bank transfer in, into the trust account of gold real estate. Uh, and then you also need to sign off the auction agreement, so that's why you've gone through and you've actually reviewed the auction agreement before the auction day so you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. And you complete the GST uh, schedule as well. Nice. So to wrap it all up, you were telling me the reason you'd go to auction is because it's an open, transparent process. It's held in a public arena so you can see what's happening in the room. You can see buyers placing bids and you can see the competition fair and square. A hundred percent, Chris. There is uh, some ability to manoeuvre the document to suit you for possession date and for deposits. It's cash and unconditional, so there are no terms to be put in the contract. It's clean and concise, there's some flexibility. But the greatest thing is that you have surety uh, at the fall of the hammer. You know who's A, either sold the home or who's bought the home. Uh, and at that point, all parties should be jumping for joy and, and uh, patting each other on the back. Absolutely. Sounds well, good to me. Sounds like a great process. Indeed.